Welcome. Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And as you can, as you can tell, that John, sound. That sound. That sound. Right there. Uh -huh. you, there's no mistake that in that. There's yeah. no mistake in that, there's John. No in that John, sound. tell me. You're an that expert. Sound. Yes. You've yes. got a good uh -huh. ear. Yes, what absolutely. kind of audience is that? That's a Friday audience. That's exactly what that is. Hook up my jumper cables to that right there yeah, now. Hook it up. Happy Friday, everybody. And it's not just <laughs> any Friday. Tonight is actually the two-year anniversary of the pandemic. Two years, it's true. Two years is the cotton anniversary. Your gift is all those cloth masks that we now know are completely ineffective. <laughs> the World Health Organization, this is true, officially declared COVID a pandemic on March 11th, 2020. Remember those early lockdown days? Me neither, but <laughs> let's try in our beloved once running segment. The Late Show's rockin' two year coronavirus pandemiversary. A far a look back. I'm gonna get Omicron! Back at the start of all of this, not everyone was taking COVID seriously. Case in point, Utah Jazz Center Rudy Gobert. Seen here after David Blaine stole his watch. <laughs> At a press conference in March of 2020, Rudy made fun of pandemic precautions when just days before he tested positive, he stood to leave, turned back, and jokingly touched every microphone on the table. <laughs> that clip has not aged well. <laughs> but after two years of COVID, neither have I. When the pandemic was officially declared, all of the New York late night hosts got together and we made a detailed plan that immediately got flushed down the toilet. <laughs> Tell them what happened, Steve. Well, let me explain what's going on. Uh, all of the New York City late night shows were planning to go without audiences starting on Monday. We announced that last night, actually. And uh, that changed because just a few hours ago, we got some surprising news. We would be going without an audience starting tonight. This is absolutely true. We're just kind of winging. This is yeah. rehearsal right now. That's right. Our live studio audience was gathered outside, and they were all sent home. Well, not the tourists. They went to go touch stuff at the M&M store. <laughs> now, because that night we didn't do a show, we just taped our rehearsal. That day's audience was just two dozen staff members scattered throughout the seats. And compared to the storage room we taped in for the next 15 months, that sounded like a sold-out crowd at the Garden. Now, days later, folks across the country were told to shelter in place, and, and for some of us, that place was the tub. People all over America have hunkered down in their own houses to ride out the coronavirus. The CDC is saying this might go on for the next eight weeks, so get comfortable. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Okay. Eight weeks was... A little off. <laughs> also, that was false advertising for how much bathing I'd do during the pandemic. <laughs> Those early first few months were tough. It was almost two years ago today when we got hit with a global toilet paper shortage. It may not have been our number one problem, but it was definitely number two. <laughs> well, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, Joe. <laughs> yeah, Joe. With TP shelves empty, people started scrambling for an alternative. And in March of 2020, U.S. searches for bidet mm, reached an all-time high. Of course, a search for bidet is always followed by searches for how do I dry off my butt without toilet paper? <laughs> and are terry cloth draperies a thing? <laughs> and there were, there were so many moments of hopeful humanity during the lockdown, like quarantining Italians who serenaded each other from their balconies. <laughs> And here in America, we did the same. I'm sorry, what's that? I'm sorry, I'm being told that we actually banged pots and pans together <laughs> at 7 o'clock for nurses? Did we, hold on, did we do anything else for them? No, just the banging? <laughs> You're welcome? 
Then a bunch of other stuff happened. Vaccines, new president, murderous anti-democratic rampage on our capital, yada, 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 the Batman. But <laughs> the biggest takeaway from our two years of pandemic, the one common experience that unites us as Americans, we all got a little pudgy. But now 61% of Americans are trying to break unhealthy eating habits that arose during the pandemic. Good luck with that. <laughs> Meanwhile, the other 39% are using their treadmill as a conveyor belt to funnel thin mints directly into our mouths. <laughs> Just set it on eight. Just set it on eight. Incline. Incline. And people aren't the only ones feeling the weight of the past two years. Apparently, pets have also put on pandemic pounds. And that means all pets. We're talking thick kitties, <laughs> chonky doggies, even plump pet snakes. <laughs> what are they feeding that thing? And has anyone seen our fat dog lately? <laughs> of course, no one can say what the next years will bring pandemic-wise, but at least we've learned not to say what I said on last year's anniversary. That does it for our one-year core anniversary special. Tune in next year when I hope we have nothing to commemorate. Way to go, Pat Steven. <laughs> oh, and uh, hot tip: don't get that J Lo Hearts A Rod tattoo. <laughs> of course. It's not just COVID that's bad for you. In other health news, a new study found that exposure to leaded gasoline lowered the IQ of about half the population of the United States, which explains the popularity of the mass singer. <laughs> for our younger viewers, for our younger viewers who may not understand this new story, back in the day, gasoline used to have lead in it. When I was a kid, after he filled the car, Dad used to let us lick the nozzle. <laughs> the details are... Well, they're upsetting. In total, <laughs> childhood lead exposure cost America an estimated 824 million IQ points, or 2.6 points per person on average. Okay, that's on average, of course. Some more, some less. The majority of the IQ lost were concentrated in these two. <laughs> but... <laughs> sure. Sure. But according to the study, this is only really a problem for people born before 1996, the year the U.S. banned gas containing lead. Okay. But uh, I was born before 1996. <laughs> Are they saying that exposure to lead made me less smart? That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> In other news, exposure to leaded gasoline lowered the IQ of about half the population of the United States. Well, that explains the popularity of the mass singer. Anyway, welcome to The Late Show. I'm Stephen Colbert. We've got a great show for you today. My guests are Amy Bryant.